Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be talking about three tips I just wish I knew when I was starting out with Blender. Now three of these things might be stuff that you look at and go, well, duh, I knew that. And uh, hey, that's good. I've been using it for 15 years and some of these things I literally just discovered. So I'm going to share them out. Uh, there will be a text article down below. So if you want to get step-by-step -step details, you can get it there. And without further ado, let us jump in. Now the first thing we're going to be looking at is about undo and redo. Now this is something I get wrong all the time. So here I am in the model and I'm gonna, oops, oops, I didn't get it all. I forgot his face. I forgot his skeleton. I made a couple of mistakes here. And generally what you would do is just control Z, control Z until you are back to where you want to be. Well, there used to be something called an undo stack here in Blender. And frankly, there still is. So we're going to show you how to enable that. Go here into edit and then go to preferences. And then we are going to go to key map available right here. And you're going to want to find screen. Inside a screen, you're going to want to find screen global. And you'll notice here you have the hotkeys for undo, control Z or control Z, and redo, uh, shift control Z. So what we are going to do is add a brand new one. So go down to the bottom of the screen global section and here go add new. With add new selected, expand it out like so because I imagine you don't want it to be called none and doing nothing. So instead we'll come here, we'll pick a key and we'll hit the Z key or the Z key like so. And we're going to set a couple of modifiers for that. Control and Alt. So if Control and Alt are pressed, we are going to go ahead and do, well none doesn't seem like a good idea. So instead we're going to do ed dot undo underscore history. And as soon as I press enter, you're going to notice it changes this command into undo history. All right, so now we have the ability to actually do an undo stack. If you want to save this forever, by the way, click the little hamburger down here and click save preferences. All right, so that is our first thing. So now you'll notice if I move this guy around, so like, yeah, and then yeah, and then yeah, and then oops, I accidentally scaled him. Oh, I did that too high. Let's get down. Okay, that was all kinds of mistakes. So now what I can do is do a control alt and Z and right where my keyboard is, the entire history of what I just did is here. So if I want to just go back one step, I can go back one step. Or I can go here and I go, okay, I want to go all the way back to my first move. Oop, that's not where I want to be. So you're going to notice it's, you're going to actually be going to the, the thing before it. So if I go here and go to poggle, to, um, toggle paint, I'll still be in the paint toggle because I'm actually one step away from where I was going. Also, I can do is I got control alt Z and I can do it in reverse. So I'm like, oh no, I wanted to go back to the redo. Okay, here we go. So we're back to the resize. So it is a... A visual history of all of the things you have performed and you can easily jump undo and redo so if you are like me and you make a whole lot of mistakes you might want to set this one up now it doesn't have to be bound to control alt z that just happens to be where it used to be so i don't know why this was removed this is a very useful tool for people that make lots of mistakes so if you want to have more of a uh, direct jump back a number of steps. I think it's 10 in the history, by the way, or you can also jump forward and redo. That is this one. So that is the first tip we've got. And it's great for people that make lots of mistakes. Now, another tip we got is for people that want to really kind of walk a wild side. You want to check out some new features, come here to edit and then preferences. And sometimes you'll see in a tutorial or a video, they say, okay, go to experimental. And you'd be like, well, there is no experimental. Well, that's because you got to do a little bit of work. In order to do this, go here to the interface tab and you'll notice here there is a developer's extra. Click developer's extra and then presto, there is your experimental tab. And you'll see here, this is a production release. So we're looking at Blender 2.91, the production version that was released a couple of days ago. Uh, so there's not a lot of experimental things here. However, if we switch on over to an experimental, an alpha or a beta release, such as here in the Alpha 2.92 release, well, here we're going to see a lot more of experimental features. So we're going to come here once again, edit, preferences, interface, developer extras. That will enable the experimental tab. And then we're going to click the experimental tab. And here you're going to see we've got a lot of options here. We have sculpt vertex colors, switch object operator, sculpt mode tilt support, add object tools, prototype of uh, new hair type. Uh, we got undo and uh, cycles debug options as well. So those are the two uh, from 2.91 that carry over. Here you can see five more experimental versions. So a lot of times if you're watching either on this channel or say Pablo on the official Blender channel or or other features kind of showcasing cutting edge stuff, there's a pretty good chance, even if you are in the alpha or beta build, you're not going to be able to access that stuff unless you manually come in here and enable it. So if I want to go ahead and see uh, vertex color sculpting, I can turn it on right there. By the way, you'll notice over here, we have web browser links. Click one of those and it will actually open you up in a browser and showcase what that feature is all about. Now, a lot
lot of these are from uh, Pablo Navarro. He's the guy doing all of the sculpting work. And he does a lot of his things as experimental versions. So you see here, pretty good documentation of what everything is all about. Now, sometimes you're going to find a half of a paragraph and good luck figuring out what the feature is. Sometimes it is just massively documented. This is one of the best examples I've seen yet. And you've also got uh, feedback and, and so on at the bottom. So if you experience a bug or an issue or whatever, this is where you can ultimately give the feedback for it. So if you have experimental features turned on, you can get more detailed information on that particular feature by clicking this guy over here. You click here to save it. And then again, save preferences to keep your per, um, to persist your settings between uh, different versions. So that is enabling developer mode and experimental features. That's really the most useful if you're using alpha or beta features. I've, I've long held that if you're using an alpha or beta, it should have all these things turned on in the first place because that's the point of the alpha or beta. And also at the same time, you really don't want to uh, enable those in a production environment. They're called experimental for a reason. All right, so we're back to that scene I started on. I'm actually gonna showcase something right here. And there's an interesting little glitch. You can't actually um, switch to the same scene. Uh, you actually have to bounce to an intermediate scene and then back out, which I think actually might be a little bit of a bug. So here we are with the default cube. Now what I find, and this is, you're gonna be probably 90% of you already know this one. And then for the other 10, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I didn't know you could do that. So here we are with a scene. All the times you might download something from uh, Blender or whatever. And this one you probably saw off the hop. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. This is a uh, blend file for uh, showcasing upcoming UDIM support. UDIM gives you the ability to have multiple UV sets on the same object. It's great for what you're seeing here. Like they've got the front and the back and the head. And various different areas of this guy are being handled by different UV sets. And, and I'll cover UDIM at some point in the future. This is probably the future of game related um, texturing, which is really a cool feature, especially as hardware gets a little bit better and so on. But you'll notice here when I import Imported this guy's default settings. Uh, what we got here, this is, uh, what is this guy? Probably a, an image. All right, so we got an, the image editor down here. We have a 3D viewport over here. We have a 3D viewport in texture painting mode over here. And we got a text viewer over here. Now, sometimes when you open up someone else's blended file, what you get is like a hog, like a, a mishmash of gibberish. So you may not like the way they've configured their user interface. And what I always ended up doing was coming on in here and like laboriously basically turning Blender back into, you know, the way I like it. So there we go, that's, okay, off screen. But that is often how I start using Blender. So if you download someone else's Blend file, but you don't necessarily want their user interface to go with it, I don't know how, after 15 years of Blender, I had no idea that you could do this, but this one is definitely a time saver. So as I mentioned, I can't go to the same file right away. So we're gonna hop back to the default cube. Now I'm gonna open that guy up again, and we've got a couple of options here. So when I select that blend file, I can click this gear icon over here, and I can just turn load UI off. And I can't believe that, that's been hidden there all along. I have no idea what version that was added in, but I, God, I wish I knew about that earlier. So then all you do is you click open, and then boom, it opens up using your default UI settings, not what the end user did. And I don't really know why this isn't the default, to be honest. I don't know how often you would actually want to load someone else's user interface in instead of your own. So that is the third tip. I literally just discovered that this weekend. It's the inspiration for this video because in all honesty, had I known about this feature, I would have saved dozens of hours at the very least over the span of my life. And it's been one of those things I've found really frustrating with Blender all along, and it is so easily handled. Also, by the way, if you don't like that default behavior at all, so you never wanna load the other person's user interface, you can do that as well. So once again, come back into Blender Preferences, go here to Save and Load, and just turn Load UI off. And I honestly, I can't believe I didn't know about this one. It has been there. I, I have no idea how long it's been there, but I, please someone tell me that this was just recently added so that I don't feel like a complete idiot on this one. But I gotta know there's other people that are running into the same scenario here that uh, also don't like loading that user interface in. You save it there, set that, save your preferences, and now anytime you load something, you will have your default user interface experience, not the last artist to do that blend file. So this makes working with things like from BlendSwap or um, other places online with blend files you download, you can bring them in and they look like your projects, not someone else's. And I definitely like that. So that is uh, three tips. The first one, again, um, 
I forget which order I did this in. I think the first one was the undo stack. Very straightforward in turning that on. Again, just come on in here into the key map screen, screen global, add a new entry of type ed.undo underscore history and bind it to whatever open keys you want, such as control alt and Z. That used to be how this was enabled. That is a great little feature because once again, you can, you can screw things up uh, to your heart's content and then just basically control alt Z and you can have and undo. So I didn't like that painting. All right, here, let's do this instead. Oh, don't like that painting. Okay, I can go back. Let's just undo that and we'll go back one step further. That is a really, really nice feature, even though my computer seems to not enjoy that particular undo set. So you can have visual on screen undo and redo. I believe it is again up to 10. Uh, the next thing again was the developer mode interface. Turn on developer extras. You'll get this new experimental tab. By far and away more useful if you're checking out alpha or beta features. But if you want to check out like all those brand new awesome sculpting tools before they are ready for prime time, you're not going to only have to download the alpha or beta version. You're also probably going to have to turn them on right here. So that is the experimental tab. And then finally, uh, we have the, um, uh, the ability to load things without their user interface. Simply go open. And then when you're loading it, click this little gear, load UI, or of course, edit preferences, save and load and turn it off globally. So that's three tips for using Blender. I am curious, first off, did you know all three of those? Are any of those three useful to you? And do you have your own tips you would like to share? Let me know all those things in the comments down below. And there will also be a linked text step-by-step -step guide for anything. So if you missed it here, you can get it there. Let me know what you thought. Comments down below. Talk to you later. Goodbye.